Hello, didn't see you there. <laughs> was just reading this excellent book while I was waiting for you to come in. Uh, yes, the name of this book, you ask? Yes, uh, Breaking Dawn by uh, Stephanie Meyer. Masterpiece. Is it? Hmm, quite. I've never heard of it, but I'll take your word for it. It's the fourth book in the critically acclaimed Twilight series. Wait, there were four? I thought that was like a trilogy. Not only are there four books in the Twilight series, Stephanie Meyer actually rewrote the entire series again, but this time from the perspective of the male character, Edward. Huh. I was just reading the book on head right here in the corner. A much right. more interesting read, although I suspect I... there's a bit of overlap. <laughs> I, I I don't think that there is any of that. There's no no actually there's no overlap whatsoever. I, I thought I it was like one of those books. So, no, actually, it it's a young adult book. Uh, they don't they don't really get in into. Oh, I mean, I'm thinking of Fifty Shades. Yeah, that's the sequel, kind of. It is it is a spin-off. It was originally fan fiction of Twilight. What are we doing in this library? Uh, we're looking for all ice. Kind of. All Alice. Yep, so we're past the one number nine door, and now we are searching the library. And I we... think maybe you, you should click on more shelves that we haven't looked at yet. Yep. There's a lot of them. The we already checked this section. It looks like this is the same as that other side. So we'll check this one now. Energy theory, huh? I don't even understand the damn title. Looks like this shelf's all science and technology. Okay. It's full yeah, that of tracks. Science and technology. And then what's this? Oh, this looks different. Are property values going to go out in space too these days? Man, guess times are tough for aliens too. This one says cosmic inflation. What? I prefer sonic inflation. Yeah, don't Google that, please. Super symmetric string theory in 10 dimensional space time. Oh yeah, that's just some light afternoon tea reading right there. Yeah. They're just talking about super string theory, of course. It's a theory theory of reality where, hmm, how to explain a simpletons like you? It says that all of the elements of the universe are governed by vibrations and harmonics of tiny supersymmetric strings. Wow, that sounds stupid. What's this? An overview of conformal field theory. Oh, well, it's a theory that posits an invariant quantum field where conformal transformation can take place. Knock it off with this science voodoo stuff. You trying to put me to sleep? Yes. Yes, actually. Theory of general relativity, huh? Oh, I know this one. That's like Einstein, right? Uh, huh. I saw Oppenheimer. What a good movie. I didn't understand what was happening, but see, like everybody else liked it, and that means I liked it too. See, my friends went to go see Oppenheimer. I said it sounded boring, so I didn't go, and then when they came back, they were like, yeah, dude, that movie sucked, and I was like, yep, I knew it. I mean, it wasn't bad, but I mean, it was very long, so kind of boring. Quantum Gravity. Seven, do you have any idea what this is? How about you start by using real words? Then maybe we'll get somewhere. Quantum gravity. Neither of those are real words, hey, apparently. Have, have you clicked on those four books in the middle, the bottom? They don't look very interesting. Okay, sure. All that's here is Faraday's laws of electrolysis. I believe that's going to be about elect... Ele hmm... Electrolysis in an electro electrolyte solution. These particular laws were set down by Michael Faraday. Surely you've heard of a Faraday cage before, right? 
N no. Hmm. Oh. Man, those are not suspicious at all. What's the deal with these titles? What's the deal with airplane peanuts? <laughs> They're all just gibberish. Hey, what if we like switched them around and made like words, you know? Switch them around? That sounds stupid. Yeah. If we move them around, maybe they'll like spell something. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Hey, it's worth a shot. Okay, well, let's do that, I suppose. Wonder what we're um, gonna spell. Open here, find bulb. Uh -huh. How about this? Looks like putting that out in the this. right order opened this thing right up. <laughs> that was a piece of cake. Hooray! You did it, Jumpy. I guess that turned out well enough. Hmm. <laughs> So the letters from the title spell out, because I have to read it to you, because um, you guys don't remember how to read, right? Only hey, I do. Are you so being says, insensitive, Snake? You physically can't read. It says, open here, read. find bulb. Yes, I'm making a blind <laughs> I'm sorry. Wow, look at that. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. It looks like somebody. Hmm, look at that typo right there. Somebody once told me. Looks like somebody put these uh, four books here on the shelf together. Uh, uh, what? This is like the second or third typo we've seen in the game now, I think? Oh, more than that. Yeah. In their defense, there was a lot of translating. The light bulb looks like it's brand new. And it's really big, so it'll make a lot of light. <laughs> Powerful light bulb, huh? This will be pretty bright. Cool. There's nothing here anymore, though. All right. Uh, I suppose we can look at the note. There's a note on the table. Lights to the books. Huh. Like, what does that mean? Interesting. Well, intelligence often hides itself in darkness, like me, which is why I hate lights. Have you ever thought about the pages of a book? Each page only sees, what, maybe two or three minutes of light before the reader is on to the next. They spend the rest of their lives locked in darkness. Rather like myself. <laughs> That's horrible. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining, not at all. I live in the darkness, yes. But that has gifted me with the ability to catch the truths others might miss. I can hear the voices hidden in the darkness, you might say. That's completely normal. Yeah, he's a normal guy. So the it, note... Completely normal things to say, too. He just says, lights to the books, which is something. Okay, let's check this angle out now. Energy theory, development of nanotechnology, materials, interactions between shortwave energy and matter. What else we got? Just listening to you read those, like, titles is giving me a headache. Can't say fancy technology stuff and I get along real well. Keep on talking about that stuff and you're gonna put me to sleep. Alright, we don't um, care about that shelf. This yeah. is the shelf we were just looking at. Black hole hypothesis. Gamma ray astrophysics. I guess this bookshelf has an astronomy theme. Wow. What do we got down here? History of Buddhism. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Look! This one, like, says cultural heritage of Rome. Don't men, like, really like Roman shit? Like, don't you, don't all men fantasize about being in their, like, like, ancient Roman era? Like, See, just serving the Roman, isn't that like a, isn't that like a manly thing? See, when a man hits 35, there's one of two things he'll base his personality on for the rest of his life. Either fantasizing about the Roman Empire or grilling. And if he's really adventurous, it'll be both. But that's going to be serious inheritance tax. I would say that that's pretty accurate, yeah. 
Fermian creatures? It seems a little fancy for some kind of prehistoric critter. Not to mention most of them were likely reptiles and amphibians. Without air, I can't imagine they had much need of ferns. That's got nothing to do with this. Wah wah. History of the, like, medieval period. Ugh. Maybe it's about Sir Lancelot. He was real, right? Didn't um, he just oh, sorry. yeah. <laughs> sh sure thing. I don't think you're gonna find a guy who didn't really exist in a history book. Hey, it's another one of those kids' picture books. It looks a lot like the other one we found. We got a book called Cowboys and Indians. This one has some Native Americans on the cover. Hey, Junpei, take a look at this one. Native Americans, huh? Maybe it's got some... Whoa! Huh. Guess it's one of them pop-up book, right? Got the letters L, R, and K popping out of it. Can't make any sense out of them, though. Large, round, and kinky? Sounds like a good time to me. Yeah, yeah but probably not. Yeah. I got a picture book with L, R, and K. Cool. L was, wait, that's an R? Wait a minute. L, R, and K. One of, that does not look like an R. Maybe? Also, there's four... There are four things sticking up, not three. L, R, and K. It looks like two L's, a K, and an I. Well, regardless, we have a couple pop-ups now. And those are just history books. What the... I'm oh, sorry. <clears throat> What's Hellenism? I think it's something like a fusion of Greek and Oriental culture. Interesting. That sounds like a very odd aesthetic. Hey, look at this. This book's called Greek Mythology. Damn, that thing's huge. Can't imagine anyone's actually read the whole thing. Pretty sure it just put me to sleep, like everything else in this library. Yeah. This one's called History of the Western World. Well, I'd assume it's about European history. Uh, yeah. Just gonna leave it at that snake. Hey, Doesn't hey, Junpei. Seem like you. If you're American when you enter the bathroom stall, and you're Russian when you come out, what are you while you're in it? Uh, dead? European! Ha 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 ha! Isn't that funny, Junpei? Laugh with me, Junpei! Laugh with me! Ha 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 Okay, that was pretty good. No. Oriental history. Maybe this one's about China's 4,000 years of history or something? Hey, Chinese history and Oriental history aren't the same thing. Come on, Clover. Yeah, you, it's the current you, year. You can't yes, be misidentifying 20, people like that. It's 2024. Clover. The book is called Oriental History. I guess that's that shelf. And then... This is just the same shelf, I think. Yeah, and then this is probably the one we started at. Yeah. So I guess we'll look at this big door. This big opening is the door to the library. It's pretty impressive. Almost looks as though the door to the shrine, like a church or something. There's another door after it, and then a passageway beyond that. At the end of that passageway is a door with that Neptune symbol engraved on it. Hurry up, we need to find the key with the mark of Neptune. Okay. This sounds like a job for the best brother and sister team in the world. <laughs> Tee -hee. Man, it's like Seven and I don't exist. It's huge. Well, it's not like there's a lock, so we can get out anytime we want. But that would be rather pointless. Let's look around some more. Handrail is made of metal. Okay. I guess we'll just go down the stairs, because... There's more perspectives to look at. Algebraic number theory. It's math. There's another one like that over here. 
you mean something like primary number theory or analytical number theory or geometry. Oh my gosh, like, <laughs> how did you know? Nobody said anything about those. Well, number theory is usually split into four chief disciplines. If there was a book named Algebraic Number Theory, I took a wild guess that the other three would be there as well. Looks like I was right. What a nerd. Okay, you know what? My man, probably, like, the experiments did work on him, and he actually is... Tell like does have telepathy or something. I don't know. The Pythagorean theorem. This is a should I use one. the Pythagorean theorem, bitch? Sounds like there are a number of math books in this section. I too love triangles. This one's Goldbach's conjecture. Conjecture? What's it about? Like magic or psychic stuff or something? Right, I bet it's about jewelry, isn't it? It may have an odd title, but it's actually a very respectable mathematics book. It deals with one of the unsolved problems of additive number theory. Uh, sorry I said anything. Look, let's not get into this right now, okay? Cool. That's a weird book, Junpei. Indian mathematics. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Why is that funny? Um, Clover? Uh, Clover? Something you're not telling us? It's 2024, Clover. What do you... Why, Why is that yeah. funny? <laughs> Clover? A weird book you... called Indian mathematics. You know how, like, every single game has, like... Or, like, every community, it yeah. seems like, has, like, a character in their fan, like, in their work of fiction that they're a fan of that they, like, just kind of, uh, all agree is racist. <laughs> like. It might be Clover, you don't know. It might be Clover in this game. What is it, like, in, uh, in, like, Persona 5, it's, it's Kasumi. <laughs> no. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Clover, you are the... You are the bully. We are... The, you're the one we're uh, choosing for this. In 999. In the Nonary Games. Ah, uh, sorry. That's me. It says Riemann Hypothesis. What is there to hypothesize about? <laughs> uh, about with a Riemann... Seems pretty straightforward. Oh no! I don't get it. Mm. Heaven's no. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, there are many factors: length, girth, lubrication, or lack of. It's an exciting and rapidly growing. <laughs> Oh my! Whoa! I love it when you talk about things like that, big brother. <laughs> this is Japan, it's okay. What's this? Origin of Japanese folklore? Looks like there are a bunch of books about Japanese culture here. Mostly ones about folklore, though. Well, folklore can cover a wide range of subjects. History, urban life, religious trends, environmental changes, oral traditions. Folklore can cover all of those things if you know where to look. This looks pretty deep. Wow. Agriculture and historical organizations in folklore. What a dry title. Modern Japanese literature, huh? Interesting. Hey, there's one of those picture books here. Something about these things feels kind of nice, you know? Brings back good memories. I guess even people like Seven were kids once. Uh, yeah? No shit, you little brat! Hey, guys, cool it. 
All right, I think I'm going to take this picture book. I like looking at pictures. Tales of Old Japan. Got a magic wand on it. Okay, that looks more like one of those, like, ball cup things, but... So, what's inside? Aren't you going to open it? Pretty sure it's just going to have pages inside, smart. Ah! Looks like another pop-up book. This book I'm has shocked. S, E, a dash, and a number five sticking out of it. I might be impressed if I was five. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. That's not super useful yet. Nope. Let's see what we got here. It's just, you know, I would give you direction, but it's just this place is just books, books, and more books. It's just a round room of books. Yes, exactly. So many books here. I wonder what this one's... Whoa! What's this? Warm. Oh! S sorry. Uh, oh, what uh, happened? No, I'm, uh, sorry. What was warm? What happened? What's the deal with this sappy stuff? There are a bunch of books on folklore and myth here. I, uh, I think he was getting handsy with Clover there. Oh. June? <laughs> Listen, June is old hat. Clover is the new hotness for June Pay right now. It seems like it, yeah. There are books here in all sorts of languages, but there's something suspicious about the shelf on the left. This iron plate is bolted down. I don't think it's a door. I think it's just a wall. And that's back upstairs. So what was that shelf he was talking about? This bookshelf has sort of a glass inlay. Pretty big. There's only six books on it. That seems kind of weird. Hey, it looks like there's something on the bottom. I can't really see it, though. The glass is all foggy. There are a couple books on the glass shelf. From left to right, they say volume 6, 3, 2, 4, 1, and 5. Hmm. All right, and it's locked. Yep, will not budge. Hey, you remember what those books were? Uh, six, three, two, four, one, five. Okay, we'll go with that. Okay, in the middle of the glass door is a cylinder lock. Kind of looks like where you rotate the numbers and you get the right ones to open it. What the hell is this? I think they just gave us the answer. Might as well give it a shot. So, six, two, three? Uh, no, six, two, wait a minute. Oops. Was it that? Try that. No, it was, uh... No, it was six, two, one, four, three, five. Oh, there we go. Oh, six, three, two, four, one, five. Okay. See, look at that. I couldn't remember for even 30 seconds. I'm not good with memorizing numbers. Me neither. Sequences. I just guessed. Oh, you did it, Junpei. Yay! I don't know why, but I don't really feel particularly happy about being praised for that. Whatever. At least the lock's open now. Yeah, that's such a secure lock when you have the solution just right in front of you. Yep. See if we can get it open, alright? Alright, and there was a light bulb. You know, I know I know where this is going. We're going to have to put light bulbs in, and we're going to have to put the books down in a specific way so that they cast shadows on the wall. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. Feels like a light bulb. Pretty high wattage, too, unless I miss my guess. This should generate quite a bit of light. Okay. Cool. Wattage. Love me some wattage. Look at these books, I suppose. Dad kind. What the hell is this? Wasn't that a German mathematician? Maybe it's a compilation of his work. Interesting. Liebernis? This book is in German. It looks like it's the complete works of something. Never heard of it. That's a shock. Well, if Snake doesn't know what it is, I don't think we'll ever know. Okay, well, that's interesting. 
Owen, huh? Owen is not enough to go on. Perhaps it's about the English Revolutionary. Well, it's Owen. Sheldrake? Sheldrake? Isn't Sheldrake... Yeah. I got the volume number uh... written on the lower part of the spine. Interesting. Okay. What about, I guess, the podium? There are dim lights on the floor. They're set at three points across the floor. So there are three lights in here. I'm going to change the bulbs. Now they should. Whoa. Those light bulbs well, how about really that? make a difference. It's pretty bright in here now. Interesting. Let's get some... Books yeah, out, I was gonna I say, it looks like you can put the books down on those podium-looking things. Wow, it's so bright now! It's almost blinding! Really? Blinding? Snake is right there? And then... It's so bright now, it's almost blinding, and then... Yeah. But also... Uh... Never mind. Alright, that means we just have to do this. Small enclosure with nine sides. There are three of these things that look kind of like music stands. Put the picture books on the stands. Awesome! It looks like they... it worked. Way to go, Junpei! Good job, buddy! There's something projecting on the bottom. These letters, they seem familiar. Sheldrake 5? Open up the fifth Sheldrake book. Junpei read the text out loud. I think I saw the rest of this collection somewhere. Yeah, I think it was somewhere around here. Let's go take a look. Okay. Seven and Clover walked off, leaving Junpei and Snake behind. Sheldrake. Hmm. Have you heard of him? Sheldrake, I mean. Junpei grinned. Yeah, Lotus told me about him. There's a There's British, British biochemist, biochemist named Sheldrake. Sheldrake. He has a he has rather, rather interesting, interesting theory. theory. Bonyurimpa cameo. Morphogenetic fields. I miss the Bonyurimpa. Which relies on the theory of morphic resonance. Really? From Lotus, huh? Well, Clover also said something to me about that stuff. She did? Yeah, um, what was it? The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. <sighs> that girl. I told her not to tell anyone. You did? Why? Well... Junpei's eyes narrowed. Look, man, I didn't push it because we're in a hurry, but I'm kind of sick of this. How about you just tell me, okay? Tell you what? Don't give me that. About the experiment. Yeah. For real. Snake's shoulders slumped and he shook his head slowly. <sighs> He'd finally given up. Very well, fine. I'll tell you everything. But not here. Let's move to the top floor. Junpei nodded. With that, they climbed the stairs to the top floor. Snake was silent for a moment after they arrived, then finally crossed his arms and spoke. I suppose I might as well start by telling you why I kept quiet, and why I made sure Clover did as well. Okay. To be honest, the explanation is quite simple. Zero told me not to. Oh. I had little choice. He didn't walk up and tell me, of course. He gave me a message engraved on a card. Knew it. Snake reached into his sleeve and pulled out a small, stiff piece of paper. That's... I speculated way back when that he wasn't telling us everything. A braille card. <laughs> it looks just like the one you showed us earlier. So you had two cards? No, only one. Huh? What do you mean? I thought that card just had some rules for the nonary game on it. Yes, it did. And those were the rules I read you. However, 
they were not the only thing on the card. There was something I didn't read. Of course. Well, perhaps I should say there was something I couldn't read. And that was? Tell no one of the events that took place nine years ago. Tell, and I activate your sister's detonator. It's a threat on our lives. Oh. Well, um... Nick nodded. Well, what about Clover? Did she get a message from Zero Two? I don't believe she did. But doesn't it strike you as strange that Zero would shut my mouth, but not hers? Yeah. To be on the safe side, however, I told her it was best not to tell anyone. Still, apparently she told you. That girl. What's wrong with her telling me? I figured some stuff out with the things she told me. Hmm. I mean, it looks like the whole activate her detonator thing was just a bluff. She's prancing around downstairs happy as a clam now that you're back. <laughs> Clams. Snake glanced down at Clover and Seven examining one of the bookshelves. That's very true. I've decided I can trust you. I've decided <laughs> to tell you the truth. Thank you. The chance that Santa is zero is very high. I I've feel been saying like that for a while. Santa doesn't have well, the time to observe us at the moment. I've been saying that about everybody, honestly. And at any rate, even if he were, I very much doubt he would kill us. Why? Clover told me about the four-leaf clover, about the words. If he knew about that, then he was in my group during the first experiment. I'm sure of it. He wouldn't kill us. No matter what the situation was. Yeah, let's just disregard all those other timelines where we all died horribly. But yeah, no, we won't, we won't die. Probably. Nick paused and cocked his head as though he was listening to something very far away. <sighs> his face looked dark as though something was weighing on him. Hey, uh, Snake. Junpei wasn't quite sure what to say. Snake turned and looked at him. Yes, I know. You want to know what happened during the experiment? Yeah. How much do you know? Clover told me about... This, that, and the other thing. I see. The morphogenetic field in the experiments nine years prior. How the experiments had taken place simultaneously at two locations. One being the ship, and the other being a building in Nevada. And Sounds the like Area 51. Experiment. <laughs> <laughs> quote she unquote, told died. you all that, did she? The girl Nick who died was down. actually a June. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm convinced at this point. But his face was tight. A slight tremor shook his body, and he tried to hide it. He was putting on a good front, but even Junpei could tell that he was holding back something deep and powerful. Hmm. He made as if to brush something from his face and looked up at Junpei. At any rate, I now know how much you've learned. All that remains for us to determine is who did this and why, right? Yes. Can you tell me what happened? Yes. Snake nodded slowly. The people who organized the initial experiment were from a company called Cradle Pharmaceuticals. There were yes. four of them running the show. Gentaro Hongo, Nagisa Nijisaki, Teruaki Kubota, Kagechika Musashido. Hongo was the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Nijisaki was his right-hand man and did the lion's share of the planning. Kubota led the company's research and development division. He's kind of like the ninth man, but you know. Musashido was their majority stockholder. Looks like the captain. It was these I don't four know. people who planned the initial experiment. Hmm. Let me simplify it for you. Oh, Hongo in that fourth guy. And Nijisaki put it all together. The right, the right hand man, probably yeah. the guy that uh, was dressed as Snake. Ooh, could be. Died. Yeah. Kubota developed the technology required, and Musashido provided the cash. Huh, so it's Hongo, Nijisaki, K 
Kubota, Musashido. Junpei couldn't shake the sense that he had heard those four names somewhere before. Of course, more than four people were required to conduct an experiment of this scale. To that end, they organized a top secret team to assist them with their research. All in all, they gathered ten people or so. Those ten completed their team, and they were able to begin the project. They named it the Nonary Project. The purpose of the experiment was to research the prospect of controlling a human mind through sheer will. The uh, huh. vessel, I suppose you could say, for this control was the morphogenetic field. Huh. Huh. Why did the glycerin suddenly begin to crystallize? Why did the crystal structure of EDT undergo a sudden change? Why did the rats improve their puzzle-solving skills with each generation? Experiments with humans produce the same results. The more people who knew the answer to a question, the more there were who could answer correctly without having seen the problem before. Why is that? How could it happen? Hmm. The answer is that the shape of the answer has been stored in a field invisible to the naked eye. And through that field, the resonant event transmits information related to that answer. That's essentially the idea behind morphogenetic fields. But that's just a theory. A GAME THEORY! I'm sorry. I was uh, waiting for it. Can't bring yourself to believe it? Yeah. Um... Let's say someone killed another person because the devil told them to do it. Hey, Whether the happens. devil exists or not has no relevance to the murder. They believe the devil exists. Whether or not he does is immaterial. So what matters here is that Hongo believed in the morphogenetic field. That's right. Snake nodded. But I still don't get it. You said they wanted to figure out how to control people. Right? That is what you were saying. Yes. So how are they going to do that with a morphogenetic field? I'll keep it simple. Let's suppose 10,000 people have solved a certain problem. The chance of you knowing that answer, even if no one has told you, will go up. Let's have another example, shall we? Say one million people were to do a handstand right now. Tomorrow, the chances of you doing a handstand would be higher, even if you had heard nothing of this hypothetical mass handstand. Mankind's thought process and actions are all part of a resonant event. All of the resonant events encoded in the fields are projected onto you. Of course, this assumes you believe in this theory. Do you follow so far? Yeah. Sure, we'll say we do at least. Now, if there was a person who had the same effect as those millions of people, what would happen? Mm. If that one person were to do a handstand, other people would find themselves wanting to do handstands as well. Can you imagine what a person with powers like that would be able to do? Uh, Come so this on, is, there's no way. I, mean, I guess I understand now the whole like why they, you know, Ice Nine and everything what they what they were getting at and the the crystallization of glycerin. It all comes back to morphogenetic fields. Yeah. I'm not done. I'm not done. Imagine another scenario. Imagine another person. This is an ordinary person. Let's say he does a handstand. What if there was someone who could grab the resonant event he created by doing that and use it to make other people do handstands? What would happen then? Mm. A person who has the power to write to the field and someone who can read from the same. You could think of them as the writer and the reader or the transmitter and the receiver. What would the world be like if there were people with abilities like these? Junpei thought about it for a moment. So the transmitter's resonant event can be transmitted through the field and sent to the receiver. And then the transmitter can control the receiver however they wish. That's what you're saying, right? Yes. Close enough, at least. Come on, that's just crazy. Well, if you want to prove that, then you'll have to test it first. At least, that was how they thought. 
That was why they decided to do their experiment. That was how the Nonary Project began. Nick suddenly looked very serious. By the uh. way, Junpei? Have you ever heard of the Gansfeld experiment? Yes. Yes. Junpei cleared his throat and tried to act calm. Yeah, that was an experiment in telepathy, right? You place a pair of subjects in separate rooms. Then you show one a picture and ask the other what they see. Interesting. I'm impressed. Yes, that is exactly correct. So, why did you bring up the Gansfeld experiment? It was used to screen subjects for the Nonary Project. The hospital in a remote town was affiliated with Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Hongo used it to conduct experiments on visiting children in secret. Some of them, he found, had potential. This dude does not stop getting more and more evil. What, you think conducting secret experiments on children visiting your hospital is unethical? Like... Oh, yeah, you're right. No, definitely not. Yeah. He began to gather children that showed promise. Children that seemed as though they might be able to access the field. Of course, none of them volunteered. They were kidnapped. kidnapped. You know, I believe this is literally the, like, the same exact story as, like, Halo. <laughs> like Master Chief and all the other Spartans were kidnapped as like five year old kids from playgrounds and stuff because the UNSC were scouting them and they were like looking for the ones with potential no that'd be yeah. crazy his face Classic barely story. moved as he spoke there were nine pairs of siblings taken for 18 children total of course for reasons that were not fully understood at the time each pair had one transmitter and one receiver. They were split perfectly. As such, the 18 children were split into two groups of nine. The children who were put into group Q were the ones who excelled at transmitting. They were transferred to the mock experiment building known as Building Q in the Nevada desert. The children who excelled at receiving were put in group A. Group A was then placed on the former hospital ship Gigantic. From the experiments he had conducted so far, Hongo had learned the following. There are two things that can increase one's resonance with the fields. The first is epiphany. The other is danger. Have you ever been faced with an especially difficult problem and thought about it very long and very hard until finally an answer suddenly appeared in your mind? Uh-huh. It may seem obvious to say so, but that is what is meant by epiphany. The information obtained through that epiphany can be easily transmitted through the fields, where it can be easily interpreted. Adding danger to that equation allows for even easier field access. That's where Hongo came in. They set up a number of puzzles across the gigantic. The participants had to solve each one before they could move to the next room. Of course, he hadn't forgotten to include danger. Of course. He had detonated a bomb on the hull of the Gigantic. The children in Group A were forced to play the nonary game as the ship sunk. Right, <laughs> because it's the, uh, what, epiphany and danger? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think casually forcing nine children to escape from a sinking ship, that doesn't seem that unethical, does it? No, that's, that's a normal thing that normal people do. Yeah. By forcing the children into a life or death situation, Hongo hoped to increase the likelihood of their tapping into the fields. The children from Group Q, on the other hand, were confined to the mock experiment building, Building Q. Building Q duplicated the interior and puzzles of the gigantic exactly. Every detail was exactly the same. Hongo explained the situation to the children in Group Q. Solve the puzzles you find throughout the rooms. When you have the answers, transmit that information to the children in Group A. If you succeed, they will be able to solve the puzzles and escape. But if you fail, then the gigantic will sink and your brothers and sisters will drown. 
Those were his orders. That's uh, what a you great know guy. Why astronauts of Apollo 13 were able to return to Earth safely? No, I don't. It was because NASA had access to a replica of the Apollo 13 capsule. All of the equipment, the instruments, everything. All of it identical. Everything was just like the real Apollo 13. NASA was able to replicate the situation the astronauts found themselves in. By putting themselves in the same situation, they attempted to solve the problems the astronauts were dealing with. Once they found solutions, they reported their findings to the men aboard the actual capsule. That was how they were able to return safely. Uh. It was the same with the gigantic in Building Q. The children from Group Q had to use the power of Epiphany to solve the puzzles they found and transmit what they learned through the fields. The children in Group A, however, they had to access the fields to learn how they might advance to the next stage. That is the simplest explanation I can manage. Snake sounded defeated. His half-hearted attempt at derision served only to show how much the story had affected him. Huh. Just as uh, yeah, Junpei that's just was about to speak. Hey, Junpei, Snake! How much longer are you two going to sit around on those bony asses? How much longer are you going to do story exposition? Get down here already! Wah, wah. Seven's words echoed from down below. Snake took a deep breath and blinked rapidly as if just waking up from a long nap. He's right. Let's go, shall we? We don't have much time. We need to get out of here and soon. Snake headed for the stairs, but Junpei put out an arm to stop it. Hold it. There's one more thing I want to ask you. Hmm? Are you sure that there were 18 kids? Why? Well, I thought it was only 16. Oh, yes. That was what they said on the news, wasn't it? Yes, I have no doubt that 18 children were abducted and used in Hongo's experiment. After all, you couldn't exactly play a nonary game with any less, could you? I mean, that's a pretty good point. Well, yeah, yeah but are you saying that the news got it wrong? Yes, I am. There were two more children. However, they had no relatives that I'm aware of. I imagine no one filed a police report when they went missing. They were brother and sister, like Clover and I. The brother's name was Aoi. The sister's name was... Her name was... Akane. Akane. <laughs> Snake couldn't seem to bring himself to continue. Just say it. Say it's Akane. Looked as if what he was about to say brought him great pain. Her name was Akane. <clears throat> oh, it's so predictable. That was the girl who died. Jump. <laughs> but it's okay, because she was brought back with all uh, the Ice Nine. Junpei felt as if he had been punched in the stomach. His That's a really common name. And his head felt light. Akane Kurashiki died. That's a really Nine common name. Ago? Then, it, who is Chun? No, 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 no. That's impossible. It can't be true. Akane isn't that uncommon of a name. If Snake had known her last name, that's a different matter entirely. So they share a name. A lot of other people do, too. It doesn't mean anything. It was someone else. Of course it was. It has to be. <laughs> Junpei shook his head hard and pulled himself back to reality. Is something wrong, Junpei? Your breathing sounds strange. Then Snake had noticed. Junpei cleared his throat and tried to act Oh, uh, no, it's it's nothing. I'm fine. Let's get back down there, all right? Snake raised an eyebrow but said nothing. He headed down the stairs, Junpei bringing up the rear. <sighs> I couldn't do it. 
Why didn't I ask? What's her last name? I just couldn't get the words to come out. With every step he took, the cold hard sound of feet against metal dug at his heart. Wow. What a good story oh. time that was. Oh, well, that was a lore dump. So now you have the backstory. It was a lot. Yeah, was that was like process. a 20 minute conversation. That's a. Uh... I mean, I don't really know how to react to that just because it's very. Um... It's like, uh, well, yeah, that that all that all seems to add up. It that makes sense. That, uh, yep. Are that, you ready to end this episode? I think we're at as good a point as any. Sweet. So next time we're going to clear out of the library and, well, see what the heck is beyond that. <sighs> That's, uh, chew on that for a while. That was a lot of, uh, that was a lot of exposition. Maybe go back, rewatch some of that. And then we Simmer shall that. chew, chew, chew. Chew and graze and swallow and digest. Mmm, digestion. Mmm. All right. Well, see you next time. Yeah.